One, two, three. Harold and Brad. Windy City Filmmakers. Harold and Brad. Windy City Filmmakers. Harold and Brad. In progress. Okay, so we do a little intro, then we'll get into it. Okay? Three, two, one. What's going on, y'all? Brad Stevens here for another edition of the Harold and Brad Winnie City Filmmakers Podcast. Hey, Steve, what's going on, brother? What's up, B? You can call me H. <laughs> <laughs> yes, we have a very special guest with us today, the super talented singer, actress, songwriter, Teresa Griffin is with us. How you doing? I'm doing great. How are you? Pretty good, pretty good. Thanks for doing the show. We appreciate it big time. My pleasure. Thank you. Uh, okay. <laughs> So the first question we always ask people is a two-parter, and it's, what's your connection to Chicago, and what kind of art do you create? My connection to Chicago? Um, I I don't know. Um, that's, that's interesting. Um, music. I came here to do music, and uh, music is the art that I create, um, as well as I, I create the art of um, loving kids. Great. And so you came, you came from uh, Louisiana originally, right? Yes. Yes. Okay, I came from okay. Louisiana. Okay. Monroe. Okay. Nice. So what? Because I always hear, I went to, well, I've, I've been to Baton Rouge and I've been to, uh, for my friend's wedding and I've been to uh, New Orleans and I love just even being, I just love the, the music, the, the sense of music. What's the music scene like in Louisiana? Because I always seem, seem to be very rich and powerful. Um, the music scene is, um, I would say the base of the music scene comes from like Zotico and first um, church music. And then um, this is a Bible, it's part of the Bible Belt. And then we have blues, which blues. is huge. And um, like I said, Zotico and jazz, you know, jazz and, and not necessarily in any of that order, but definitely all of that, you know, and we even have big band because of the um, the uh, high schools and the colleges, you know, so we have all of the bench, bench, bench mm, 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 you know, so it's a, it's a really rich, wonderful um, place to bring up your kids um, um, when you're talking about a melting pot of music. Yeah. Yeah. So so talking about kids, let's talk about when you started singing. How, where were you and how old were you and, and how did you get started? How ah. are you really going to do this the rest of your life? Yeah. I was um, I remember the first time I sang with my sister in church. It was probably I was probably like five years old. My father had called her up to sing and I was like, I can sing too, daddy. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> Didn't want to be left out, you know, and um, just hearing our voices intertwine uh, created a love affair for me. And um, I've known that that's what I wanted to do ever since then. Um, after being in college, I went to college on a vocal scholarship and um, I just knew I needed to be somewhere else to do what really felt great to me, which was my home and my heart. And so I came to Chicago. So, so was, was there vocal training for you growing up or did you just do it in church and had, had was just found out that you were natural? Um, well, initially, well, let's be clear in Louisiana, then we still had music programs in schools. And um, that's the pity about there not being uh, music programs in schools now um, because it's a discovery period and it's a training period. Um, so my first song in elementary school was I'll have a blue Christmas without you. And um, that's where I first started to um, sing with you know, a choir or other people outside of my sisters. But my my real training started with my father and and my grandmother who taught us in the car <laughs> on the way to church. 
you know, um, and then um, from there, each one of my music teachers played a part in training my vocals and training my voice. And and then when I um, I got to high school, um, I distinctly remember Mr. Inslee um, having me compete in what was called um, Allstate, Louisiana Allstate Choir. And um, and you 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 go in, you sight read. They give you something that you've never seen before, and they say, "Okay, so go ahead and sight read this." And you 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 know you you've been trained in class. They give you you know different pieces of music, and they tell you to sight read as a group. And so here, there's one alto, there's um, one soprano, there's one tenor, there's one bass, uh, there's a second soprano and the second. Um, alto if as this competition goes along you know they put more voices in it to make it more intricate and um i knew then this was something that i really you know enjoyed and liked doing and sight reading was you know one of those skills that you wanted to have and if you'll lose it if you don't you know if you're not something that you're always doing but that was part of the the training and so mr Inslee was this amazing teacher who started that was you know my formal formal beginning of training and then after winning you know after winning and being there one year then the next year i went and go back and the next year i went and go back and the so I ended up with a scholarship to go to college who, and I was trained by a professional opera singer in college. His name was Lewis Neighbors. Lewis Neighbors. Nice, nice, nice. What, 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 and what college did you go to again? Northeast Louisiana University. Okay, good stuff, good stuff. Now, now, now do, you, do you write? Do you write songs as well? Yes. I, okay. Yeah, and produce them, yes. Right, right. So what, what is that process like when, you, when you're writing a song? Is every song different? Like, do you, do you hear like the, uh, a, a beat first or a rhythm first? Or do the lyrics come first? Or is each one like its own, own thing? For me, it just depends on what space I'm in. You know, sometimes I can lay in bed and have a feeling about something. Mm-hmm. And I start to hum, I, I grab my phone. Thank God there's this thing called voice record in the phone. <laughs> and uh, because, you know, when, that, when it hits you, you want to get it right then. And um, and I'll just start singing because, it, or if I hear the bass line, I'll, you know, I'll start like singing the bass line. <laughs> You know, it's something like that. Or if I hear the horn line first, I can hear. Nice. Yeah, and it's like, you know, so it just depends on what I'm hearing and, you know, what I'm feeling um, as to how I'm writing. You know, I, I remember the last uh, Purple Like the Moon was one of those songs where um, it was just really laid back. I was laying in bed. It's like, ah, oh, I like that. It's like, oh, and it wasn't any words at first, you know. And then, you know, later on that day, I was like, oh, mm. Sunday's purple like the moon. And the sun drips down orange every day. And I was like, oh, that's, you know, and I record. And so it, it just depends on how it comes to me. I love that. You know, I, I was thinking about uh, years ago, Michael Jackson was doing some interview and he was saying how he was driving down the street and the bass line for Billie Jean, dun, 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 before he had any lyrics, right? <laughs> and I like those moments again because that you actually act on. Because what if he said, well, that's, that's, that's going to be nothing. You just let it blow. <laughs> right. You might never had that bass line, right? I mean, I, I think the importance of it, those things that come to you and you actually take note of them. Yeah, and 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 um, if you don't, it's probably a lot of different things in my phone. And, you know, sometimes I have to go back and be like, oh, I remember when I recorded that. Mm, let me go back and listen to it, and you know, um, oh yeah, that's you know, and those are great moments. You know, if it comes back to you, it's nine times out of ten something that you should record.
that big show. Tell us all about it. What big show? Which one? <laughs> that, that first one that, uh, I, I want to say it's uh, American Idol. Oh, that wasn't a big show. I'm talking about uh, The Voice. The Voice. <laughs> yeah, I love had big show. <laughs> I did. <laughs> tell us, uh, tell us about that whole process because I watched that that uh, that blind audition and it was hot. Um, I spent months waiting for that moment, and they let all of the younger people go first. So the older people, any and when I say older, anybody over thirty, you went. You know, 29 and up, you went last, you know, so you didn't even know if you were going to go. And they and you didn't find out about that until, you know, the process, you know, as you're into the process, you know, as you are sitting there waiting every day for them to call you, you're sequestered in a hotel. All of your family comes there and then they separate you from your family, which is mind altering. Why? did you get my whole family to come here and now I can't spend any time with them after I already been here for months, you know, months without wow. being around my family. So it's like the ultimate, like I want to screw with your head. And, you know, for me being grown, it was just more irritating that, you know, that you think you want to mess with my head at that point. Cause it's kind of all about a mind thing. It's a mind thing, all of it was. And um, and when somebody tells you every time what's going to happen if you don't make it and, you know, so now you're talking negative to me and um, and I'm like, oh, well, I guess I go home and go back to being successful like I was. <laughs> right. You know, this ain't, I just didn't think that this was the end all. So it wasn't. Like, oh my God, like some people were like, oh my God, you know, we want you to win. I'm like, you win when you lose. <laughs> you win when you lose on here. Yeah. You know, if you're in a contract where they pay the attorney, you're not really winning. I'm adult enough to know that. If you pay my attorney, he's not working at my best interest. So I win when I lose. I, it's just about publicity. That's what this is about. So what I do want to do is I want to get on the show and I want you to show my audition so that the world sees me because then I win. Yeah. The world sees me because that's advertisement I can't pay for. And um, that's the way, you know, I looked at it and um, it was um, irritating at times, but then it was these amazing people that I got to meet. And uh, I spent time with for months. You're listening to the Harold and Brad Windy City Filmmakers Podcast. Check us out on Buzzsprout, Spotify, Deezer, Podcast Addict, Stitcher, iTunes, and YouTube. Now back to the show. Uh oh, girl. <laughs> you done found you a man. And I guess he's loving you. Like no one can. <laughs> so let's uh, 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 transition over to your music. I want to talk about Distant Lover. Okay. That's what I want to talk about because yeah. guess what, Brad? What's up? I was in the video. Ah, yeah, good stuff. <laughs> right, 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 right. <laughs> oh, my goodness. We had a great time, didn't we, Harold? We really did. Oh, my goodness. We had an amazing time. Spencer Leak Jr. Uh, let us use this amazing antique car for the oh, video. That's whose car that was. That's whose car that was. It's good to have friends. Yes. And uh, yeah. this car was so amazing. And then uh, Sesamir was my uh, love interest. And you all were mean, hateful goons. Gangsters. <laughs> y'all were gangster asses. And y'all beat him down in the parking lot. It did, was so good. It was so good. It did, was so did, good. Did we do it right for you? Because we made no, it look really, good. You guys were so amazing and patient. And uh, let me tell you what was funny. Was it funny or not, the girls with the fans, how long it took for them oh. to <laughs> I forgot about it. It's an inside joke. It's an inside joke. Yeah, we yeah. been a long time with the fans for them fans to be, oh Lord. I'm saying. 
That was something. That was but something. Let me tell you, that day was crazy great because we started out that morning um, at the lakefront. It's like that whole video was like shot in a day. But it was a lot of stuff that we did. We went to the, the lakefront and got this beachfront, you know, uh, uh, footage. And then we went over to uh, Garfield, Conservatory. Garfield Park Conservatory. Yeah. Yes, and, and we, you know, with all these beautiful flowers and we're, you know, a lovey dovey moment. And then we go to the Kit Kat Club with this vibe where it's antique and, you know, back in a period of time and it looks so nostalgic. And we shoot and we eat because, you know, yeah. I cooked that day. Yeah. And, uh, and um, everybody was so professional and amazing and the, the costumes. The costumes. Yeah. Were amazing. People yeah. went all out. And I was so grateful and I felt so blessed. And the outcome of the video was absolutely delicious and perfect. And V103 helped push it. And um, I, I just really, even now, I just feel so tremendously blessed. Thanks for watching the Harold and Brad. Windy City Filmmakers Podcast. Keep us on YouTube. Subscribe to the station and hit the bell for notifications. Peace. Oh la la. Yeah.